for 100 years, people who wanted to talk to other people were wired to their homes. They were latched or chained to their desks uh, and really didn't have much in the way of freedom. And we were, in fact, putting people, uh, giving people communications in their vehicles. But even then, that's not much better than being tied to your desk. You're still trapped in your car. So we found out from people like the superintendent of police in Chicago who told us that he had a real problem. These officers had to be in communications. The only way they could talk was to be in their cars, and yet the people they were protecting were walking on the streets. He asked us, how can I have my officers connected and still uh, in uh, mingling with the people? Uh, and we discovered this was true of people in managing uh, airports, uh, people managing businesses, real estate people. So we became aware of the fact that real communications is portable communications. Put the device on the person. I was four years old, lived in Winnipeg, Canada, where it's very cold in the winter and very hot in the summer. And I looked at these boys with a magnifying glass and they were burning a piece of paper by focusing the rays of the sun onto this paper through a magnifying glass. And I just had to know how that worked. And so I did the obvious thing. I took a, a soda pop bottle and broke it and tried to make a magnifying glass out of it. And that's when I realized now that I had discovered that I was going to be an engineer because I want to know how everything works and I always have. When I was nine years old, I invented, at least I think I invented, a train that could travel through a tunnel from one end of the country to another. And what was unique about this train was two things. I had learned about friction, and so we had to get rid of friction. And so I thought about why don't we support this train on a magnetic field, because I knew the two magnets, when they were close together, force themselves apart. And the second thing is, if we want to get rid of all friction, we have to get rid of the air. So this train traveled in a tunnel that was totally evacuated, that was in a vacuum. And amazingly enough, they are just starting to build trains like that, maybe without the vacuum, but with magnetic uh, levitation. So maybe it wasn't such a dumb idea after all. Well, science has been part of my life you know, from the time I was four years old, you know, just knowing how things uh, work, you know, uh, having a curiosity. And, and my curiosity has been limitless, and that's uh, quite a handicap because there are times in your life when you have to specialize. Uh, but I literally want to know everything, uh, and uh, only in recent years have I finally realized that I'm never going to know everything. In fact, the older I get, and the more stupid I find out uh, that I am. Uh, but uh, science, the understanding of how things work, what things are, uh, has been uh, crucially important to me. So uh, I started out with uh, fantasy. Uh, I've always loved uh, science fiction. Uh, I've always known I was going to be an engineer, so I went to a technical high school uh, so that I could uh, take every kind of shop, learn how to work with my hands, learn about materials, uh, and I always knew that I was going to uh, go to an engineering school and get an engineering degree. Well, science can be interesting. Science can be fun. And if, in fact, teachers learn how to present a science in that way, uh, learn how to make people curious, you know, how to make it enjoyable, you know, I think more people w will get involved. You know, but it's not important that everybody become a scientist. Everybody doesn't have to be a mathematician. Make it interesting enough so the people that have that interest, that have that talent, uh, do latch on to the wonderful world that uh, will open up if they dig into science and mathematics. The teaching of science, mathematics, of, of anything, there really is no different than a game. 
Uh, if you make a game dull, uh, if you make it uninteresting, if you don't have something that grabs people, then they won't get interested and, and they'll go do something else. So I don't see why teaching should be any different than, uh, than creating games, creating a curriculum. It ought to be the same as creating a game. Make it interesting, make it fun, make it a challenge. All of those things, all of the attributes of playing a game are the things that draw people into learning. Uh, and I think that's what we ought to do. We ought to somehow coalesce the concept of teaching with the concept of uh, game playing. And uh, we're gonna find that a lot more of our youngsters are gonna get interested in learning and specifically about science, mathematics, technology. Thank you.